Welcome to StreamSets Cloud. Here I am at the login page. I can log in with my Google ID or Microsoft account. Uh, we will be introducing username and password in the future, but for now, you might need to create one of these in order to log into StreamSets Cloud. So I'm presented with the terms of service. This is an important legal document and you should read it in its entirety. Uh, I'm just gonna click through and I'm welcomed into the StreamSets Cloud beta. So if I click through the welcome uh, pop-up, I can create a pipeline. So uh, let's go ahead and do so. I'm gonna call it MySQL to Snowflake. And I'm immediately into the pipeline editor. And I've got a little bit of help here. Um, I can add stages to a pipeline here, I'm told, by dragging them from the palette. I can filter these stages by uh, origins, processors, destinations, and so on. So um, once I drag each uh, stage onto the canvas, I can edit its configuration down here. And then when I'm ready, I can preview the pipeline and then uh, run it. So let's go ahead. Uh, I kind of know what I want to do. I've got a lot of choice here with these stages. I can manipulate data in uh, ADLS, Azure uh, Data Lake Service, uh, Amazon. Uh, I've got many choices here, but what I want to do is pull data from MySQL. So I'm gonna use the MySQL query consumer. So uh, this drops the stage onto my canvas, and this will be very familiar if perhaps you've seen or used uh, StreamSets Data Collector in the past or StreamSets Control Hub. And I get to configure uh, the uh, origin of the pipeline. And these little triangles here, the little warning signs, tell me what I need to do. So I need the JDBC connection string. So this is pretty standard stuff. So I'm going to copy that from my uh, cheat sheet off screen and paste it in. And then I'll need a SQL query. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use an incremental query. What I want to do is read data from a, a table, taxi transaction, and I want to uh, read it every few seconds um, for this demo. Uh, it might be every few minutes or every few hours in real life. And I'm using uh, a row ID as my offset. So this is how I keep track of, or, or how rather StreamSets Cloud keeps track of how much data it's read. So my initial offset is going to be zero and the offset column is going to be uh, ID. And I'm gonna set the query interval down to every two seconds. Uh, you probably wouldn't do this in production. You probably wouldn't want to be querying your source database quite that quickly, but it does let us see the data. And I'm gonna increase my batch size to 2000 just so the data comes through a little bit more quickly there. So um, I'm going to whiz through the rest of the configuration here because uh, you don't need to wait for me to paste in my uh, username and password. And on connection encryption, I just need to say that uh, SSL mode is required. I'm not going to choose any of these settings that uh, I actually need to verify uh, the identity. I just want the connection to be secure. So with that in place, I can immediately preview the pipeline and uh, see what data is there. Now, what's happened here is um, it's pulled the first 10 records from the uh, MySQL database. So this is live data. And this is a really nice feature here. I haven't defined any schema, but I get to see uh, the shape of the data that's there. I get to uh, inspect the data. I can see there's this credit card field. Uh, that's problematic. I really don't want that in my data warehouse, um, but I certainly do want all of these other fields. 
So I'm going to want a way to uh, pull that out. And if I kind of inspect the data, data a little bit more, I can see that there are uh, cash transactions here as well as credit card transactions. Well, for my purposes today, I really just want those credit card records, but I don't want the credit card numbers. So let's see how I can do that. I have a number of processors, uh, just come out of preview here. I have a number of processors here that I can manipulate data within the pipeline. So if I scroll through these, I've got some development ones here. I can uh, flatten the record if it's got nested fields, I can merge fields together and so on. What I'm gonna want to do first is uh, root data depending on some condition. So I'm gonna use my stream selector here and add a condition. And what I want to do is say, um, I only want those records with um, payment type as credit card. So I can say, we've got like a little um, language here, expression language to define these kind of conditions. So I can say record value, and I want to say in slash, oops, payment type equals CRD. And immediately I can run another preview just to check I've done the right thing there. So again, it's just gonna pull those first 10 rows from the database and it's, and it's really quick. Um, I can see that here, um, the first record matches that condition as I would expect, payment type is card. Scroll down, second one does, third one does. And then all the rest go to the default output because uh, their uh, payment type is cash or something else. So this gives me confidence that I'm building this pipeline correctly. This is effectively an IDE uh, for building data flow pipelines. So um, I need to do something uh, with this data. So I, uh, I've gotten just the credit card records. I need to remove that credit card field. So field remover, just join those together and I can say, okay, I wanna remove slash credit card. I can have another quick check just to check that's working. Um, and this is a really common pattern, you know, just popping into preview after every operation just to check that, yes, I had credit card in the input to that field remover and it's gone from the output. Okay, so where do I want to send records next? Well, I want to send them to Snowflake. So uh, just get the uh, destination there and um, this is going to send data to the Snowflake uh, data warehouse. And again, it's gonna take me a minute or two to enter all of these parameters. So uh, I'm gonna fast forward through that. And let's talk about this uh, parameter I'm just pasting in here. I'm saying I want the table name in Snowflake to be set from this attribute. And this attribute, JDBC tables, holds the table name that the record was uh, read from in MySQL. So this is a really nice technique. This means that um, I could maybe change that origin to be the multi-table consumer and be reading from multiple tables and not have to change anything else in the pipeline. This uh, little expression here makes the pipeline do exactly what I want it to do. Another thing I'm gonna enable here is table auto create. So I don't have a table for this data in Snowflake, but it's gonna be created automatically. Now, the last thing I need to do with Snowflake is set up staging. And uh, the most efficient way of doing this, I've determined is to use Amazon S3 staging and I have set up a stage name in uh, Snowflake. It's called uh, Pat Demo. And then I need to supply the uh, parameters for my um, S3 bucket. So what's happening here is that the uh, Snowflake destination is going to write the, the data to a staging area in an S3 bucket. And then it's going to instruct Snowflake 
to uh, read in the data from there. That's basically how uh, bulk data ingest works with uh, Snowflake. We don't um, call SQL commands directly to insert data. So there's one thing uh, I've got left to do. We've got this uh, open output stream on Stream Selector. So in this case, all I want to do with the um, non-credit card records is uh, discard them. So I'm going to drag trash there and we can just tidy things up a little bit. So this is my pipeline. Before we run it, let's just go check in Snowflake. So uh, I don't have a taxi transaction table in my public uh, schema there. So uh, I can go and run. And what should happen is uh, it's going to start from the beginning of the data. I've never run this pipeline before. And what's happening now is that Streamsets Cloud is actually cre dynamically creating um, the runtime pipeline executor. So again, this is a cloud service. I haven't uh, installed anything on uh, a machine anywhere. I literally just logged in for the first time a few minutes ago, and it's creating the resources that it needs to uh, run my pipeline. Okay, so the uh, pipeline exec has actually started and I can go down to monitoring and see, and all I'm seeing here is what's going to trash this selected uh, stage. If I click into the background, I can see it's pulled 4,000 records. I happen to know there's a little bit more than uh, 5,000. So it's pulling those um, records at the frequency that I uh, defined. And I can see into the pipeline here, I can see that the consumer has read 5,400 records, and then the stream selector has handled the same number, and then um, two and a half thousand or so have gone to the field remover, and I've discarded 2,900. So I can see exactly where my records are going, and then 2,493 end up in Snowflake. So if we hop across to Snowflake, we can just uh, refresh the metadata there. We can see the new taxi transaction table. So it's been created dynamically. And uh, we can see the columns down here, all of those columns. And note, there's no credit card here. So we've copied all of the data except for that credit card because we really don't want personal data in our data warehouse. So do a quick select and we can see 2,493 rows and that should be uh, exactly what we re uh, wrote from here. So we've copied that initial uh, two and a half thousand rows from uh, from MySQL into Snowflake, but you'll notice that this pipeline is still running. If you watch the metrics carefully, you can see they change over time. The pipeline is scanning MySQL every few seconds just to check for more data. It's running that incremental query. Now, I can go to uh, my workbench and let's just insert, I'm just going to insert three records uh, for just for the demo here. And if we scroll across, we can see that two of them had credit cards and one doesn't. So two of them are going to be caught by that filter and then one's going to be discarded. So before we do that, let's just refresh our memory. We've processed uh, 5,411 and sent 2493 to Snowflake. So those numbers should go up. So let's just uh, run this. Uh, so those that data was inserted. And we should see this number tick up within about 10 seconds. There we go, 5414. So uh, we've ingested three more records. And 2495, we passed two of them on to uh, Snowflake. And in fact, if we go back here, we can see that uh, there are now 2495 rows in Snowflake. So our data warehouse is uh, up to date in near real time. In this particular demo, it's within a few seconds of uh, data changing in MySQL. So a quick introduction to Streamsets Cloud. Thank you for watching.